Okay, so this is my Anabi 20 from IKEA and what I did to it is a little hack so that it doesn't turn off when the music is not playing. First of all, what we will do is to open up our Anabi 20. Disregard mine because mine has the Amazon input glued to the top and there is the USB cable going into the box. So let's take it apart. First off you will take this volume button just grab it and open it and from the rear side you have in total 10 screws that you need to unscrew. 8 of them are behind those white caps and two are hidden inside here. So let me take them out and we will then I will then show you what I did to prevent it from turning off. So after we have unscrewed all the screws the easiest way to open this up is the following. Just push the finger inside and slightly pull it out. As you can see here it's coming out. And now we see that the complete enclosure is open. Following we need to remove few cables so this is the first one second this is for the battery pack and this one is for the speakers now when we have access to our board and electronics what I did is the following this part is just the regular 220 uh, supply which is connected to the uh, to the Amazon Echo input and here is the USB cable which is growing, going out through the bus reflex hole and it's coming out here so what I did with this is that I need only one power cable going in the box and from this box from this uh, power supply uh, power is supplied with this cable originally to the power supply of the NMP and with this additional cable to this uh, additional power source for the Amazon Echo input. I could have do this in a different way, more easier, but for me it was let's say the quicker way to do it. What you could do is just take uh, 5 volts from the board and uh, connect the USB cable to the 5 volts and then you don't need this whole part but I did it like this because as I said for me it was the easiest next so how to prevent it from uh, turning off what I did and what I will do now is I will remove this part so that I'm able to show you what you need to do to hack your enemy. So what you can see here is the supply from enemy. So here is the supply and this is the output we have two ground wires and we have two wires for the 18 volts these are going to the origin to the uh, electronics to the main electronics what i did here is i take i uh, soldered two wires one ground and one 18 volts and to these wires i connected this this is the dc dc converter it can take input from I believe 5 up until 35 volts 
and the output can be adjusted with this wheel from 1.5 volts up to 35 volts. Of course what I did, because we need the output of 1.7 volts, okay, somewhere between 1 and 1.7 volts, I just adjusted it so that the output is 1.7 volts, which I will show you right now. is now turned on to the power outlet and I will show you I hope it will be yeah it will be visible so if we take a look at the output voltage it is 1.8 volts it is the maximum which you should put to the input pin we could lower this voltage in an easy way so I told you that you can adjust it. adjust it so if you take a look with this we can adjust it you see 1 volt 1.22 or up to But as I said, we need one point between one point one volt and one point eight volt. I will set it up now to let's say one This will be our setup. This DC DC converter you can buy for really cheap. It's about three dollars, I believe, and I will put down the link in the description where you can buy it. Now, after we did this, what we need to do is the following: take out the power supply and. We will do the following. As you take a look at the board, you will see here, so this is almost like the center of the board. Here we have one resistor called R32. So this resistor I have desoldered. You can see that there is no resistor here. So this resistor is removed. Why? Because over this resistor to the pin 1 uh, the signal is sent so that this chip knows if there is a audio signal or not. Uh, so I didn't want to send 1.2 volts back to the uh, I believe it's this chip here uh, which is used as a switch between Bluetooth and AUX in. So this this chip is looking if we have the input from the AUX in or from Bluetooth. If we do, then he's sending one point something volts to this resistor, and from res this resistor it's going to the pin one. So. After we have removed this resistor, what we need to do is to solder this wire. So this wire is going from this output and we need to solder it to here. What I did now, I will, sol I will solder it again because I removed it so that I can show you that with this you can go above 1.8 volts. So let me sol solder this real quickly and after that we will just put everything uh, together and it will work okay so let's go and solder solder this wire to the pin number one uh, not pin number one sorry because this pin here would be number one so we need to 
solder it to this pin here so we see that from the R32 resistor which I removed line is going to here so what we need to do is put this wire from this output so wire from this output remember we set it to 1.25 volts the wire will go to here I do hope that you have a good soldering iron because this is a bit tricky because it is very very small so let's do it speaker remember red one is the speaker and on this one you have written down that it is for speakers so we have Twitter and subwoofer so this one will go here this is for the battery and I hope that you will not use this hack with the battery because it will drain your battery when you are not using the speaker and now for the last part we need to hot glue this one as well Why am I doing this? Because I don't want to hear any rattle in the box. Let it cool down and we will just close it up and that will be it. down everything is nice and aligned we just need to screw in the screws and we are done last thing to do is to put back this one okay back those rubber covers and here it is turned on it's working you need to turn it on for the first time. When you turn it on in the in the power outlet, you need to turn it on. And of course, I set the volume to maximum because I control the volume via the echo input or via my mobile phone if I'm connected on the Bluetooth. But what I'm doing now, I'm connecting my phone to the Bluetooth of the echo input and then the echo input is sending the sound via the auxin cable to the NAB so I'm not using the NAB Bluetooth function anymore so this is it working and ready to be put on the shelf again <laughs>